Good day, Strategy Gamers. Welcome back to episode two of our Let's Play series of Rule the Waves 2, um, where we're going through as a campaign with Japan. And in episode one, we did a quick overview of the game, how it works, some of the UI stuff, and general strategy that we'll have for the game. And here in episode two, we just finished designing at the end of last episode our first light cruiser ship design. So in just a couple of turns here, we'll be able to start building that. Um, because when you design a new ship in Rule the Waves, you do have to wait for your engineers, the docks, etc., to tool and fit and be ready to build uh, the new design that you've come up with. So we're going to go ahead and start going through some turns here um, to get to that point. We see that the Germans are building, um, looks like two battleships. One of them is rumored to carry 10 inch guns, um, which is a little bit less than our current battleships have with 12 inch guns. And then the battleship Palm Mineral is supposed to be done in six months. No other events triggered, so we're gonna go ahead to next turn again. And we see now that our latest light cruiser design Shisamina is ready for construction. So we have three options. We can say, yeah, I want to start building. Let's go to the build screen. We can rework the design. So um, if you're later in the game doing some very large, say, carriers or battleships that are very, um, they take a long time to design and to, to start constructing, it's very possible that in between when you start at the design phase and when you ended it, that you've unlocked new technologies where it's just, you know, I had no idea I was going to unlock that tech, so it's worth going back and reworking the design. Um, or you can say, hey, thanks, appreciate the update, but we're not going to do anything right now. We are going to go ahead to the build screen. And here, uh, you at any time can get to this by clicking build ship right here in the overview. Uh, but we're going to choose the new cruiser that we designed. And we're going to ask the AI to suggest a name, and it'll, it'll usually choose the class name for the first ship of that class. Um, and we're just going to build one, because you see that we don't really have the funds every month to go ahead and build two. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And now that we've ended our turn, we get another update here about the French, saying that one of their heavy cruisers is going to be done in two months, and another one is going to be done in eight months. So we'll go ahead and close that notification. And now in our ships under construction tab, we see that we have two battleships and a light cruiser currently under construction. Our battleships are going to finish, um, that are currently being built in Great Britain, by the way, they're going to finish their construction in six months. So what we're going to do is, unless some events trigger or something happens, in four months, we're actually going to go ahead and design our next ship class. And then by the time the design is ready to be built, we are then going to have these two ships worth of uh, monthly build cost available to our budget. So then we'll be able to afford um, 3,600 a month worth of new ships being built. We're gonna go back here just to the map. We'll go through a couple more turns. Uh, the French have completed a light cruiser. See our tensions, the US has gone down a little, Italy has gone up a little. That could be because decisions we're making of what we're building or maybe their own view of um, of us as Japan. Go ahead and hit turn again. And here, this is one of the notifications for an update around technology research. Um, so it seems like we're running, having, we're running into issues trying to develop improved surface condensers, right? Some machinery for our ships. We get a couple updates here at the end of this turn. Great Britain's building a new battleship and has completed the construction. They've commissioned two heavy cruisers. And turn again, a couple more updates. Ooh, this isn't good. So we have unexplained delays around building the light cruiser uh, Chishima. So that, that's unfortunate. Looks like the US has built heavy cruiser. France has finished the Chanzi and Great Britain has started the production of a new heavy cruiser too. 
we're going to do, let's see here. We're actually going to think about what ship class we're going to build next because we've only got two months left with the construction of these two battleships. So when we look at our current assets, we're going to have six battleships by the time that's all said and done. And if we look at the Almanac, well, we're still going to be pretty uncompetitive compared to Germany, Great Britain. Um, my goodness, Germany's building five, Great Britain two, Russia three. Six battleships compared to those numbers, that's not horrible. So remember that the larger the ship as well, um, the more difficult it may be to keep it on foreign station um, away from the host country, right? So Great Britain sending a battleship to, let's just say Taiwan, is um, sometimes a little bit more of a commitment for them than sending a destroyer or a cruiser, right? Um, and they have to, if we're going to get into a war with Great Britain, Germany, any of these European nations, you have to remember that it's not like they can send their entire navy out to the Pacific Ocean in Japan and Southeast Asia. Um, so it's not like we always have to fight all of these at the same time. The same can be said if we get into an aggressive war with, let's just say Italy. Italy doesn't have any colonial assets in the Pacific. Um, so if we want it to engage their fleets, either they would have to send um, they'd have to send part of their fleet out to the Pacific without really base support, or we would have to do the same by sending forces to either Africa or the Mediterranean. Long wind at the point I'm trying to get at is battleships look like we're in a pretty good state because having six is pretty comparable to most of these other nations. What I'm actually still a little worried about are cruisers. So what we might end up doing is when those battleships finish, we might build another cruiser but we might also start construction of a heavy cruiser because we are much further behind in heavy cruisers than we are in battleships. So I think that's what we'll do is we'll design this turn a heavy cruiser. So we look currently our heavy cruisers, we have two of them. They are of the same class, the Asma class, and they have 14 six inch guns. Okay. And when we look at our research for what guns we've researched, we see that 6-inch guns and 7-inch guns have a negative 1 quality. 8-inch guns are 0. I don't know if we can, but if we can, what we'll do is we'll try to build a heavy cruiser with 8-inch guns because of that quality. And instead of putting on 14 primary turrets of 6-inch guns, what we'll try to do is um, just do four eight inch guns. So let, let's see if we can achieve that. So we're gonna go and do design ship and choose armored cruiser. We're going to simulate a design just to get us started. You see it actually started with a 10 inch, but we're gonna go down to an eight. And let's see we can't do forward and aft double turret. Let's see what this tells us. So main guns less than nine inch in caliber without reliable training elevation, our rate of fire is decreased by 10%. Okay, but if we go up to 10 inch because of the quality, we're overweight. So actually maybe we'll be able to do 10 inch guns. So let's try for having four 10-inch guns here on our armored cruiser. Let's go through some of the settings now. The torpedo tubes actually look pretty decent. We'll keep those as is. I see that we have 10 6-inch guns and 10 3-inch guns. I actually... I'm going to have to open up the design of our Asuma class because I... That might be a really bad design, actually. Let's um, let's decrease and not have any tertiary guns. And we probably want to keep 10 six inch as secondary. So now what we need to do is we need to either increase our total displacement or we need to um, decrease how much weight we have on the ship. 
we're going to increase to actually 1100. But we don't have docks to build 1100. We need four more turns. Let's see if we can't go to 1100. And then we'll try to save this design. And by the time it's done researching, we'll just have to wait a turn or two for the docks to finish building. And then we'll be able to build an 1100 displacement heavy cruiser. No, oh, no, it's not going to let us design. So we're going to close out of this. We're just going to wait. We're going to be patient for four turns, I think. I'm going to hit turn. Okay, the Italian government is trying to sell us rights to three inch guns of quality of one. I don't know that we're, we're going to be okay without that. That's early on in the game. Too much money and three inch guns just aren't as important as, say, uh, eight inch guns of quality. One of our cruisers has run aground on the shore of a minor nation while performing an illicit intelligence operation. Oh no. They threaten to impound the ship. What is our reaction? So we can demand that they release the ship and that we'll send a strong squadron to try to communicate how serious we are. This increases our prestige, which has fallen below 20, um, but it also increases tension. And because this isn't a specific great power we're dealing with, it's going to increase tension with all nations. And it's going to increase it by a pretty good amount because it's two plus icons. We can offer our apologies to the minor nation um, and say there was a navigational error and compensate them to get the ship back. But that then decreases our prestige. Or we can let them examine the ship, um, which then is less serious and raises tension across the board uh, because we haven't apologized, we haven't tried to make amends. So we're going to demand that they release that ship because I want to get our prestige up a little higher. Great Britain has started construction of an armored cruiser. Italy started a battleship. Germany and USA both launched a new battleship. See, look, look how high our tension has gotten after that decision. All right, our battleship Iki is commissioned in the Navy. During trials, it is found that the ship is easily surpassing her design speed. So this is, again, a really nice feature of the game is that you may design the ship for 24 knots. But when it's actually built and out there and with the engine room and everything's finished, it might go faster. Um, and that's what's happened here. So that's a nice benefit. And then we see that the battleship Hatsui uh, is commissioned into the Navy. Oh no, a spy from Russia has been discovered. What do we do? So we can give it maximum publicity and denounce Russia for their aggressive policy. This increases our tension with Russia, but it gives us more money every month. Or we can handle it quietly and discreetly, which has no pros or cons. We're going to give it publicity. We got a new tech, so our researchers have identified uh, an improvement in turret and gun mountings by researching hydraulic recoil, which has a gradual improvement to rate of fire. And we've made unexpected advances in torpedo technology. So it's not necessarily that we have new torpedo technology unlocked. It's that we've um, made good progress towards getting new technologies. And that did unlock a specific technology, and that is the improved hydrostatic valve. So we now have a range. Um, we have a range of 800 yards, 25 um, knots or we have a range of 2,000 yards of 15 knots. Very well. Lots of updates here. Germany started construction of a battleship. Great Britain did the same. Our two battleships are commissioned. Germany and Great Britain both launched a battleship and Italy has launched a armored cruiser. So here you see our tension has risen with Russia. We have one more turn until dock sizes are increased and then we're gonna design that heavy cruiser. See, new docks are complete. New research area discovered around fleet tactics. And some updates. Germany increased their naval budget, that's unfortunate. And then we have a whole bunch of new ships commissioned by our 
other great powers here. Okay. So what we're going to do is two things here. One, research. You'll note that we have a new research area, and that was fleet tactics. We're actually going to put this to low. And then you see that we have now a surplus in our budget of 3500 a month, and also a decent buffer of funds built up. And we have a light cruiser finishing in 16 months. So we're going to design a, a armored cruiser now. We can go back here. Oh, sorry. We need to select armored cruiser, auto design just to get started. We can do a different name that I can pronounce. There you go. We're going to do 10 inch guns. Turrets are already in the spot that I would want them. We're going to decrease this to just 11,000 displacement because that's all we have range, or that's all we have capacity for. We're going to get rid of our tertiary turrets. Now, later game, I wouldn't necessarily do this, but I like to do this in early game because I find that there's, until you get to the point of having dual purpose guns um, and much faster engagements, it's going to be much easier to destroy the type of destroyers or light cruisers that are getting in close to a armored cruiser, just with our secondary guns even. Um, and these are casemates, we have 10 of them. And we're going to look at gun data here to see, okay, so if our enemy has 10 inch caliber guns, our current armor is actually going to protect us for anything that's 5,000 yards or greater away. So that is great news. So I don't think we need to make any improvements there. And what I'm actually going to do is decrease our deck armor to two point or 1.5, I think, to try to save some displacement weight. Okay, so that gets us much closer. Let's check to see if we have any... Okay, we're just overweight. That's the only thing we know about. Okay. Looking here, what else can we do to try to get our weight down? I'm thinking speed. So right now, in our current fleet, only our destroyers go faster than 22 knots. I think the new cruiser we designed is 23 knots, but I can't remember. So I think we're going to decrease our speed by one. And then what we're going to do is increase our rounds per gun, which adds some weight. We'll do that to 120, I think. leaves us with 440 weight remaining. Um, let's, let's actually increase our belt armor. And then if we move this up to 6 caliber, there we go. Still good, still a legal design, and we have 40 remaining. We'll increase our rounds per 130. Still good. Okay, we're gonna save this Ismu game or uh, Ismu. Excuse me. I I tried to pick a name that I could pronounce and I'm failing. Design. Everything turned out okay. Do you want to start developing? It's gonna take thirty three hundred and three months. Yes, that's fine. And now we're going to end our turn. Uh, this is one of the more interesting events because we have the option of actually choosing a specific nation. So. You're asked in the interview which nation you see is the most likely enemy in a future war. What is your answer? So the first one is just a generic statement. It increases our budget, but it's going to raise our tension with every single country equally, or almost equally. Or you can say, I don't see any risk of war in the near future. But then when your your boss, when your government hears that, they're going to go, okay, well that must mean you don't need as much money, so we're going to decrease your budget and we're also going to lower your prestige because you you seem to to possibly be a bit of a coward right you're you're not looking to expand the glory of the empire but it does also lower the tension of every nation or we can target it to a specific nation germany great britain france russia i'm going to say russia because i think that one of the first countries we can have a war with and is probably most advantageous for us to have war with in the beginning is russia and what this is going to do is increase our budget and increase our tension just with Russia. We now have Krupp Armor, which is great. And then we have some updates of various nations and what they're building. 
their the rate at which they're building battleships is just scary. See, Russia's now turned to yellow, which means we're getting closer and closer to that war threshold. Go another turn. Um, so our battleship is finished working up. So when there's the status WU for working up, and when you finish construction of a ship, it goes through what effectively are uh, sea trials, right? Where your nation tests to make sure the ship is meeting all the expectations that you might have of it and testing its seaworthiness. So now that that's done, hit OK. Same thing happened with our second battleship of the class. This is great news. We can now do destroyers up to 600 tons displacement. So probably the next design we're going to build is going to be a new destroyer, which will then probably what we'll do, say, in the next year is we'll scrap these older destroyers that are only 400 displacement here. And more news of our peers. And it looks like Great Britain is increased naval spending. My, my, my. And Germany has increased her tension with us. So let's look at the almanac here. Yeah, so Great Britain was at 230, now it's at 250. So that's like increasing our budget by 20% in one turn. That's the same amount that they increased theirs just last turn. That's absurd. I'm gonna go one more turn and then I think we'll be able to design, or excuse me, construct our new heavy cruiser. Yep, here it is. We're gonna go to the build screen and we're going to build two of them, which comes out just, just to be about something we can afford. And we'll go ahead and hit okay. And some more updates of what everyone's building. And we see here that we have 13 turns left on our light cruiser and that specific design. So now that we have those under construction, I think what we'll also do is look at the map. And currently we have these three areas that we have basis, what is modern day Taiwan, and then the Japan Isles. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to look at Taiwan. We're going to um, I think we might actually increase our, our base capacity here. Or do we maybe just want to build a coastal fortification? Because we really don't need to build things like air bases quite yet. And we don't I don't think today we have any coastal fortifications there. Yeah, because they're all in Japan. So we're gonna do that. We're going to build six inch coastal battery, I think, in Formosa. And that's going to be 400 costs per turn, which is fine. So we're going to actually have a bit of a deficit in our monthly budget, but it's only by about 150. Um, and we have plenty in our funds uh, to last the six months that that's going to happen. So that's now building battery number seven, which is a six inch coastal battery. End our turn. A colonial crisis with Russia has arisen. You are asked for recommendations. What is your advice? So we can safeguard our interests, which really increases our tension. And honestly, if we choose that, it might get us close enough for a war. I think it'll be a little under, though. But it also increases our budget and increases our prestige. Or we can say that it's best to avoid a war, but prepare for future conflicts by strengthening the Navy. So this also increases our budget. So these two options both increase our budget by the same amount, but here we don't get any prestige benefit. Or we can say we are not ready. We lose prestige, we decrease tension, but we increase our budget. So I think to avoid taking the prestige hit, we're going to do the middle option. We're just going to say, you know what, it's best to avoid today, but we should be ready for a war in the future. And here we get this research breakthrough for a heavy secondary battery. So this means secondary guns heavier than seven inches in casemates or single turrets. So we can now do things in secondary guns that are greater than seven inches in caliber. Well, that's good news. And it would seem that an unknown nation has stolen uh, 
uh, there's probably a technology here from us. And I wouldn't be too surprised if I learned that it was Russia. Let's do a quick look to compare ourselves in Russia. So their budget is almost 50% higher than ours. We have one fewer battleship than they do, but they're building three. Um, and when those three are built, they're going to have about 40,000 more tons worth of battleships than we do. They have six more armored cruisers than we do. We have two that are currently being built. They have nine lake cruisers. We have four with one being built. And we have the same number of destroyers. So we are certainly at a disadvantage, but it's not huge. The, the greatest thing I would worry about is um, a small cruiser engagements where you would rely on light cruisers and armor cruisers, where we'd just be really outnumbered. If we were in a full-on fleet fight between the two, I think it'd be probably close enough. We're going to hit in turn. Russia increased their naval budget. Shoot. So they were at 164. Now they're at... 73 okay in turn again improve surface condenser great britain increased their naval budget this is going to be a pretty common theme by the way there's a bit of an arms race really that was happening here in the early 20th century so we're now in september of 1901 and i think what we might do is in a couple turns we're going to build another light cruiser here an uprising in china makes it necessary to send an expeditionary force what is your recommendation send a strong force this increases prestige and tension you do a multinational force which just has no consequence or we have to keep out of foreign adventures, and this is going to lower tension. I think we're going to send a strong force to safeguard our interests. Oops, that increased our tensions with Russia. Now we have 21 prestige, which is nice. Italy has a new battleship, which has 8.5 inches of belt armor. And they also have a light cruiser under construction, which has five inch main guns. I can't check to see how that compares to ours. We will in a moment. And it sounds like Germany also increased their naval budget. So Italy's building cruisers with five inch main guns. And you can see here that for most of ours, we have four inch, but the new class, the Chishima, has six inch. So we would technically have slightly more firepower in our light cruisers than Italy would if we were to engage them. I'm going to intern again. We finished the coastal battery in Formosa. Great Britain has a battleship with 11 inch main guns and they also have a armored cruiser with belt inches of six with belt armor of six inches and turret armor of five inches. Okay. So you see our monthly budget has increased a little, so we're going to go ahead and build another Shishima. We're going to let it suggest a name. And monthly build costs, we're going to stay just about flat. Good news. Run it in turn. Boom times. There's been a windfall in tax revenues. What is your recommendation on how to spend? Strengthen the Navy. Our budget goes up, our prestige goes up, and tension goes up. We could build railroads to increase the long-term prosperity. Or we could do modest social programs that increase budget but decrease our prestige. We're going to build railroads. I really like that idea. It doesn't raise tensions, increases our budget, and theoretically is improving the economy in the background. Russia has increased their naval budget. It's almost as if we are increasing our naval budgets in tandem. So they are nearing double our naval budget. They now have five, wow, five battleships under construction. That's not good. 
I think what we're going to have to do is start building some new destroyers. Because I don't think we're going to keep up pace with their battleship numbers. We are going to increase our dock size because we have some funds saved up. So that's going to take a year to do. And really, I'm doing that with the mind that by about 1905, I want to build a completely new battleship that is kind of best in class. But we're going to need a lot more displacement than we have currently available. The United States increased their budgets. And we have improved um, accuracy with our rangefinders. This is good news. 11 inch guns with quality zero are researched. And Great Britain is building an armor cruiser with 14 6 inch guns. And it has belt armor of 6 inches and turret armor of 5 inches. Let's just take a look here. So they're doing 6 inch guns and 6 inches of belt armor. Our armored cruiser has one inch less of belt armor, but it has instead um, where is it? Sorry, four 10 inch guns. So we certainly would be able to outrange them and be more effective at range. Italy is offering to sell us, these are those same guns they tried to sell us before, quality one three inch. We're going to say no thanks. We have this new technology, which is a rate of fire improvement. And what we're going to do now is we're going to design a new destroyer because we're two months away from this cruiser finishing, which will then give us funds to build a couple of new destroyers. So we're going to design the destroyer now. We're going to do auto design just to fill in some of the early stuff. 600 displacement is currently the largest we can build if we remember our last tech research. And 28 knots is a pretty good speed for a destroyer of this time. The big thing for me with our destroyers is it's not a gunboat. It's a torpedo boat. That, that's how I like to think of them. We're going to decrease secondary guns to zero because that's just weight being wasted. And I don't think we have swivel mounts yet available. We'll check. No, we do. That's excellent news. Okay. So we can do centerline swivel mounts. Let's see if we can do um, another centerline W. Let's see if that fits. Probably not. It's overcrowded, which it um, decreases our rate of fire. So I think we might get rid of that. And we'll add somewhere else. What if we did... What if we did a port and a starboard broadside swivel mount? So that's okay. And we're within our displacement. So this has two three-inch guns, quite a bit of ammo, and a total of four torpedo tubes, all of them above water and on swivel mounts, which increases the, the arc. That's the arc of the three-inch turrets. So that's not going to explain that. but. I think that's pretty good, actually. Engine priority is speed. That's fine for a destroyer. Range is medium. That's fine. I think we've got kind of the perfect design here. Let's see if there's an easier name for me. Setsuki. I can say that. We'll go ahead and save this. The design was okay. It cost 208 and take one month. Yep, that's fine. And with that, I think we're actually going to call this episode to a close. So tune in for the next episode where we'll start actually constructing uh, the new destroyer design that we just came up with, and we'll continue our preparations for a war with Russia. So thanks everyone for watching, um, and we'll see you next episode. Take care.